Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be talking about shadow mapping. And that lets you have shadows in a 3D scene. And it looks something like this, so got nice shadows and everything, and they are dynamically generated, as demonstrated by what I like to call Jerry, the breakdancing cube. And yeah, being dynamically generated for both the direction light with the that one and spotlight for that one, so yeah. And that's shadow mapping. It, it adds some really nice detail to a 3D scene. Now, granted, the scene right now definitely <laughs> looks like just demonstration stuff, not like a real game scene, but I think you can see at this point that with a little bit of art direction, you can really get something respectable looking once you have, well, shadow mapping in there. And yeah, something worth mentioning is that these are actually soft shadows that I have right now. I have them on maximum hardness, but they are soft shadows. So, if I change the directional light from 0 to, say, 3 or something, and then build and run again, you notice the shadows are a lot softer now. In fact, the shadow on Jerry's looking a little bit too soft there. It's almost like it's smoke or something. But, <laughs> but yeah. You can play around with the softness and get the shadows as hard or as soft as you like. And something that's kind of cool about the setup I have, at least right now, is that soft shadows don't have any extra cost to them. So soft shadows of 10 or something ridiculous are just as cheap as hard shadows. So that's pretty nice. And, well, yeah. So that's really all I want to show off in this basic demonstration here. And what I'm going to be doing in the rest of the video is just talking about how the basic technique of shadow mapping works. And then, in the next video, in the next couple of videos, we're going to be taking that basic idea and we're going to be implementing shadow mapping in a 3D game engine to show you how you would implement shadow mapping in sort of a real-world application. And from there, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about some of the challenges that go with making fully generic shadow mapping, because shadow mapping itself isn't hard. Generic shadow mapping is tricky, to say the least. So, yeah. And we're going to be talking about some of the limitations of shadow mapping, some of the issues with it, and how you can overcome them. But most of that stuff's really just going to come up as we implement them, because shadow mapping itself isn't that hard to understand. It's a little abstract, maybe? But it's really not that hard to understand. So, yeah, let's... enough rambling. <laughs> let's dive in, and let's get started. So, if you want to understand how shadow mapping works, it helps to understand what a shadow means in computer graphics. And as far as computer graphics is concerned, all a shadow is is some point where there's an object between that point and a light. So for instance, this point that I'm circling with my mouse right here, that would be in shadow because the cube is between it and the light. And well, I could go a step further and say every point in sort of this area is in shadow because everywhere in this area there's something between any of those points and the light. In this case, the cube. So yeah, that's what it that's what shadow means in computer graphics. Just there's some there's some object between that point and the light. And Probably the most straightforward way to implement that is with ray tracing. In ray tracing, what you do, you start at the camera, which is this triangle thing here, and shoot a ray, and that hits some point in the scene. And to determine if that's in shadow or not, you cast another ray towards the light. If it makes it to the light, then great, there's nothing in between it. But if it hits some object on the way, like in this case it's the cube, then of course that point's going to be in shadow, because there's, again, something between that point and the light. So cool. That's what shadows mean in computer graphics. So now that we got that all out of the way, let's talk about shadow mapping. Now, shadow mapping has a very similar idea to ray trace shadows. It just sort of works in reverse. and You'll see what I mean in a moment. So, 
In Ray Trace Shadows, you start the camera, you find the point that you're going to test if it's in shadow or not, and then you shoot the ray out into space to see if there's some object between the point and the light. In shadow mapping, you sort of do it in reverse. You start with the light, and then you just draw the scene. You see everything that the light sees. You see what the world looks like from the light's point of view. And you might get a texture that looks something like this. And in our sort of 2D illustration, that means light seeing basically all these points, where drawn sort of a diagonal thing. So those are all the points the light seeing. So now we figured out, well, everywhere the light sees, and then you draw the scene. So that when you do get a point like this, all you have to do is you have to see where that point is in the shadow map. So in this case, it would probably be like where this line is right here. And then, what you do, if that the point in the shadow map is closer to the light than the point we're testing, well then, clearly, there's, if that, there's a point that's closer to the light, then that means there must be something between that point and the light. If there's something between the point and the light, well, it must be in shadow. And really, that's all there is to shadow mapping. It's really not that complex. It's, like I said, it is a little bit abstract, but if you can get past that and get that core idea around your head, it's a really easy technique. So I'll just go over it again, just, you know, just for completeness sake. So you start with the light. You draw the world from the light's point of view. That means it sees all these points. And that generates the shadow map. And then you draw the world from your camera's point of view. And every point the camera sees, you look up that point in the shadow map. If there's something closer to the light than the point that your camera sees, then, well, that point must be in shadow, because there's something in front of it from the light's point of view. If the light does see that point, then hey, good for you. That light sees the point, and you can draw things with light, and, you know, it's not in shadow, <laughs> basically. So yeah, and that's really all there is to shadow mapping. Again, it's it's not a hard technique, it's just, it is a little bit abstract to get your head around, but it's not that hard once you get past that. And once you do get your head around that core idea, then everything else just starts to fall into place. All those seemingly complex, bizarre shadowing mapping algorithms they have out there, Really, this is what they're doing at the end of the day. They're just doing it, you know, slightly differently. Like, I don't know, maybe they move the camera around a bit, or I don't know, something like that. <laughs> but yet, they're ultimately doing all doing this. It's pretty simple technique. And there. Now, I could talk about some of the challenges with implementing shadow mapping, but what's the fun in that when you can actually just go out and implement it firsthand and see all the challenges? Well, yeah, like, like I said, firsthand. So that's what I'm going to be doing. In the next video, I'm going to start showing you how to implement shadow mapping in a 3D game engine, so that we have a practical application to, you know, be added in, and to give you some a real-world example of all the different challenges that come along with shadow mapping. Not that there's really that many challenges that go along with it, it's just a few things you come across that you might not think of at first. So yeah. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have in this video. <laughs> like I said, it's... It, I know I've said this a million times, but it's really not that hard of a technique. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next time.